My Lord's first oral question, Lord Folkes of Cumnock. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. I'm sure the noble Lord Folkes will agree with me that the people in Scotland want their two governments to work uh, and concentrate all their attention and resources on the issues that matter most to them. And that's why this government is focused on tackling the cost of living by having inflation and growing our economy. I hope the new First Minister will have these same ambitions and work constructively with us to deliver the people of Scotland, with the Scottish Government focusing on devolved matters and allowing the UK Government to focus on reserved matters. My Lord, I do agree with the Minister, but does the Minister agree with me that there is outrage, there is outrage in Scotland at the Scottish Government spending an increasing amount of money on reserved areas? Now, I know he shares that concern, but he and the Secretary of State are the only ones who can do anything about it. So could he and the Secretary of State consider some arrangement for monitoring the expenditure of the Scottish Government to make sure that all of it is spent on devolved areas which are in great need of expenditure? Well, I know the Noble Lord is uh, dogmatic on this point, and we agree on many, on, 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 on many things. And he's absolutely right to say the people in Scotland are absolutely focused on this matter as well. I would like to report, since we last had this discussion, that there have, as there always have been, discussions between the Cabinet Secretary and the Scottish Government's Permanent Secretary, and therefore there have been issues and concerns raised to ensure the independence of the civil service. Um, the Noble Lord be pleased to note, for example, that since he last raised the issue, the Scottish Government have reallocated £20 million that they had set aside for independence referendum to their fuel insecurity fund, which is a move I think we both welcome. Furthermore, the leading candidate in the SNP leadership election has just indicated that a pause to any further independence papers on the grounds that nobody reads them. <laughs> and I can lastly confirm that the Secretary of State of Scotland has met with the Foreign Secretary to discuss the matter of Scottish Government's activities internationally. Both are very clear that any overseas engagement by Scottish Government should not encroach into reserve matters, and this will be kept under close review. My Lords, is my noble friend uh, not concerned that the police investigation into the financial conduct of the Scottish National Party, and in particular the money that was raised for a referendum, is taking such a long time? Noble Lord is correct to point out that this is a, a, a recent development uh, which has happened where the police have now indicated they are uh, 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 taking evidence from witnesses under caution. Uh, that procedure needs to allow it to, to run its course. Uh, the wheels of justice grind slowly, but hopefully they grind fine. Well, it's, um, it may be reasonable for the Scottish Government to have overseas representation to promote trade, investment and tourism, uh, but isn't it worth reminding the Scottish Government, and indeed the wider Scottish public, that the UK has an extensive network of high commissions, embassies and consulates which do exactly that for all regions of the UK, including Scotland, and all citizens of the UK. But when Scottish ministers are abroad, is the Government satisfied that when they avail themselves of UK diplomatic facilities, they not do, do so to promote separatism and the disintegration of the United Kingdom, for which they have no legitimacy. Thank yeah. <laughs> you, Noble Lord. Yes, indeed, foreign affairs is a reserved matter under Schedule 5 of the Scotland Act 1998, and therefore the sole responsibility of the UK Government and UK Parliament. However, the Scottish Government and the other devolved administrations are entitled to conduct some international activity in support of their own devolved responsibilities, such as promotion of cultural exchanges and events. And they do that often within the embassy network that we have throughout uh, the world. Um, the Scotland Act is clear that foreign affairs is outside the competence of the Scottish Government, and therefore they cannot and should not encroach into matters such as separatism or the Constitution. We have been aware that they have been doing that in recent times, and as I just reported to Noble Lord Fuchs, uh, our Secretary of State for Scotland has met with the Foreign Secretary, and that will be very closely monitored in the future. That the Scottish Government are obsessed with a referendum because they don't want to face an election on their past record in public service. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, Noble Lord. I mean, I think what's happening with this very interesting leadership debate, where we actually have what you might, well, what the newspapers are now calling civil war within the Scottish National Party, is actually what's emerging is that this obsession with independence has got in the way of them running a competent government yeah. to focus on the priorities of the people of Scotland. 
And uh, it might be worth noting they've been in power for 15 years. Uh, you might realise in the first uh, seven years of that, the, the First Minister, Alex Salmond, did manage to move the vote from 30 to 45 per cent. But the, 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 the second First Minister has not. She's actually gone backwards. And what is being debated now in this leadership campaign is that they need to get focused on the priorities of the people of Scotland and get away from this independence and uh, obsession. I don't quite know how this question has got on from on to Scottish foreign policy, but um, could my noble friend bear in mind that although foreign policy is a reserve matter and not devolved, the Scottish international footprint is a colossal and their influence is very great. And there, I think there is some justification in the feeling that they haven't in the past had adequate consultation and cooperation with our own foreign policy making here in London. So would you remind his colleagues in the Foreign Office? Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office that they should take full account of the power and influence of Scottish imprint on the international scene in promoting the United Kingdom generally. Thank you to the Noble Law for pointing that out. Um, the Scottish diaspora is, is, is a large uh, and international diaspora, but actually this matter of international engagement is really done mostly in the, in the, in the focus of trade, the Department of Trade. Where trade is a reserved matter, but trade is also a legitimate matter for Scottish companies to be promoting their activities internationally, as well as uh, the cultural aspect that we, we, we talked about. And they can legitimately do that within the machinery of the UK government, and we must allow them to continue to do that. We're just making sure we don't have an, an, a separatist agenda being promoted to countries who are, we have to remind the United Kingdom is still united. But my lords, it's not just the case of the, the uh, Scottish administration embarking in courses that are clearly ultra viris, uh, they are also embarking in courses which have grievous implications for the rest of the United Kingdom, and indeed uh, one of them has already been uh, questioned uh, and opposed by the Prime Minister, quite correctly. Um, but they continue to do so. Has the noble Lord the Minister had a chance to look at this daft bottle deposit scheme? And given that all three candidates, whatever we may think of them, uh, for the SNP leadership have uh, criticised uh, that scheme, indeed one of them, Kate Forbes, has described its effect on British retail industry as carnage, um, is the government intending to allow that to go through, or are they waiting in the SNP ditching yet another policy? Uh, uh. Thank you, Noble Lord. I think uh, this is a, one of a number of bills which are coming down the track uh, where we have to monitor things quite carefully. We already had the, 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 the Gender Recognition Act, which we, uh, uh, where we pressed the Section 35 button the first time in 437 bills that we did that. Uh, and now we've got the, the, the deposit bottle scheme, um, where we, have, we received the, so the, the, the Secretary of State for Scotland received, the, the UK Government received notification of a formal exemption to the UK Internal Market Act on March the 6th. That's Monday this week. Whereas the producers were given a deadline on March the 1st to sign up for this scheme. It feels to me like you built the house first and now you're reapplying for planning permission. In that case, and what we need to do here, Noble Lords, is emphasise the importance of the UK Internal Market Act. And whether you like Brexit or not, we were previously in a single market with 28 states in Europe. We're now in a single market with four countries in the UK. And what all our businesses say to us is they don't recognise borders. And when 60% of Scotland's trade is with England, we do not want different terms of trade between Scotland and England. And there's a number of things coming down the track where we have to remind ourselves that certain things are done better as one United Kingdom. Is it, is it possible to accept the fact that the rubbish that is thrown out of... I don't think we've spoken. No. My Lords, my Lords, I'm grateful Order. Yeah, to pass judgment on the expenditure patterns of the Scottish Government. I think the Scottish electorate are quite capable of doing that, and as they, they have in the past. But on the question of overseas trade, is there not a case for every UK embassy to have a nominated person who can deal with requests or agendas from Scotland or from Wales or from Northern Ireland so that the devolved governments know exactly how they can work in cooperation with those embassies? Uh, thank you, Noble Lord. Well, that actually does exist. And in the Scottish case, it's through the SDI, Scottish Development International. And that actually, that system has been working, been working very well. In fact, over the 26 years of devolution, it's only in the last two years that we've had this encroachment where we have a different attitude from the Scottish Government. And that's what the Noble Lords are referring to in, the, in, this, in this chamber today.
My Lords, can I thank the Noble Minister for the answers he's given today and the thoughtfulness of them. I take issue with one where he described my noble friend Lord Fawkes as being dogmatic. Can I inform the House that on this side we regard him as a cuddly pragmatist? Um, <laughs> But can I take him back to the question that he asked at the beginning? Noble Lord has said that he, um, in response to the question today, that the government will monitor um, how um, legislation, you mentioned the GRA and the bottle deposit scheme. What my noble friend Lord Fuchs was asking for was to monitor expenditure to ensure at an early stage it's not ultra vires. He didn't really address that point. Could I ask that he does so? So under the devolution settlement that was put in place in this House long before I arrived, uh, the machinery of government was set up in the Devolution Act, and it does not allow for the UK government to look over the shoulder of the Scottish Government on money sent from the Treasury to Scotland. The scrutiny exists in the Scottish Parliament. Members of the, of the Scottish Parliament rightly scrutinise the Scottish Government and hold them to account. The Auditor General for Scotland, the Accounts Commission Audit Scotland, work together to deliver public audits in Scotland. And the National Audit Office provides independent assurance that public money is spent properly and provides value and scrutinised public spending for Parliament. These are the checks and balances in place right now. If the noble lady would like to go further, we'd need to bring another act back to this House.